Hello, my name is Mary Shannon McFall, and I'm going to be, pre be presenting on chlamydia, the silent STD. Chlamydia is a sexually transmitted disease caused by the bacteria Chlamydia trachomatis. It's a silent disease, which means that um, it's very hard to detect, but once you've detected it, it's very easily treatable with antibiotics. It can cause infections in the cervix, anus, penis, eye, or the perinatal route, and it can even cause sterility. There's no current vaccination, and this infection can occur indefinitely. Uh, taxonomy. Uh, even though this was originally thought to be a virus, it is in fact a bacteria of the order Chlamydialis, class Chlamydiaceae, and there's one genus, Chlamydia. Uh, and there are three currently known species, Cipsitachi, which is a species that can cause pneumonia, C. pneumoniae, aka TWAR, which they currently think is a species, um, it's kind of a new discovery. And then there's C. trachomatis, which is the one I will be talking about today. Uh, Chlamydia trachomatis is a gram-negative cocci, it's non-modal, and it's an obligate intracellular parasite. Uh, it does not produce its own ATP, which is partially why they thought originally that it was a virus. Um, and it doesn't have spores, but it does have elementary bodies, um, which is an extracellular, non-vegetative state um, that just spreads the disease. Um, often they have plasmids, and they have this unique life cycle. Um, and right here is a McCoy stain of the inclusion bodies. Uh, one reason why it was really hard to figure out what chlamydia was is that they're very small. They're only about 350 nanometers in diameter. And so a normal microscope won't pick it up. Uh, here is a scanning electron microscope image of chlamydia attacking epithelial cells. Um, so those, since those are extracellular, are the elementary bodies. Um, for instance, this, which is a gram stain of chlamydia trachoma, is not a grand state of chlamydia trachoma because you can't actually see them. Um, those purple things you see are actually other organisms. They're too small to see in this picture. Life cycle. Um, so the elementary bodies are phagocytized, and once they're in the cell, they become vegetative reticulate bodies. Um, these are the intercellular agent that uses the ATP and um, multiplies. And eventually, the reticulate bodies will, once they have multiplied and matured, will turn back into elementary bodies and result in bursting the cell and ho death of the host cell. And then the elementary bodies will attach and infect other cells. Um, the pathogenesis of chlamydia, uh, they use hemagglutinin for attachment to epithelial cells, namely. And um, when this happens, the innate immune cells will stimulate the release of cytokines, which increase inflammation, and which involves the innate and adaptive immune uh, system. But they're not very good at detecting it because the chlamydia will is an intercellular um, infection. And reinfection and persistent inflammation can produce scarring, which pro causes problems like atopic pregnancy. Um, and even though all chlamydial infections induce IgM, IgG, IgA, and IgE antibodies, uh, they do not prevent reinfection. Portals of entry. Um, it's a sexually transmitted disease, and so it's transmitted through contact transmission from the vagina to penis or mouth, or penis to vagina, mouth, or anus. Um, and chlamydial conjunctivitis can be spread eye to eye or via fomites. Um, in women, 70% of women are asymptomatic, and this is, causes lots of difficulties because then you could be spreading the disease without knowing you have it. If they do have any symptoms, it's probably um, an unusual vaginal bleeding or discharge, a fever or pain in the abdomen or pain during sexual intercourse. Um, chlamydia will cause serv cervicitis, which is an inflammation of the cervix as shown here. And um, eventually, if it's not treated, it can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease. Um, and with all of this, it can lead to scarring, lots of pain, uh, trouble, painful urination, um, tubal factor infertility, ectopic pregnancy, um, 
and you heard that right, infertility. <laughs> in men, 50% um, of men are asymptomatic, but if they do have a symptom, it's probably clear discharge from the penis and um, pain and constant urination. Um, chlamydia will cause urethritis and possibly epididymitis, and rarely it can cause sterility. And um, another way chlamydia can be present in the body is the anal root, which is more prevalent in men because of MSM contact, which is men having sex with men contact. Uh, trachomal conjunctivitis is, a, is the trachomal infection of the eye, and it can cause redness and even scarring. Um, and this scarring can lead to blindness. It actually used to be one of the leading causes of blindness in the world. <clears throat> Uh, the perinatal root, if the mother actually does manage to get pregnant while having um, chlamydia, then this can have a spontaneous abortion or a premature birth. But if they do survive, the infant can get trachomal conjunctivitis. This is possible in like 18 to 44% of the cases, which can lead to blindness. Or they can even develop pneumonia from it in 3 to 16% of the cases, which possibly leads to lifelong respiratory problems. <clears throat> The history of this disease is interesting because it was discovered in 1907 by Halberstater and von Prowazek um, by virally culturing giasma staining scrapings from the conjunctiva of orangutans. So they thought it was a virus for a good 30, 40 years. Um, and then Machiavello in 1944 and Tang in 1957 managed to isolate the bacteria in chicken eggs. Um, still a way that you virally culture things. In 1965, Gordon and Kwan were able to culture it using the McCoy technique, and so then they knew that it was a bacteria. Um, its name is interesting because clamus means cloak in Greek because it's such a hidden dis disease, and trachomatis means rough in Greek, and I'm not quite sure why. Um, this is the most common STD in America and in the world. In America alone, over a million cases were reported to the CDC in 2014. That doesn't say anything for how many cases there were actually. Um, there's estimated 2.86 million cases per year worldwide. And as you can see, it's, the rates have only been increasing um, for both men, women, and overall. Um, Possibly because um, more people are just having sex more regularly or without condoms. Um, but s slowly the rates are starting to decrease. As you can see from 2012 to 2014, they decrease slightly um, as awareness is growing. Um, at risk populations, women get it more often than men. They have about 6.3% of women in America have it versus 2.8% of men, um, especially in the 20s range. Um, in 20 year old range. Uh, men may have lower rates just because they don't get tested as often. Um, and But also MSM puts men at higher risk than men on women sex, sexual intercourse. Also black women have nine times higher rate than whites and three times higher rate than, higher rate than Hispanic women at getting this disease, but they, that may just be cultural influences. Um, prevention. Uh, sadly, taking a birth control pill actually makes you more susceptible to the disease, um, and HIV also makes you more susceptible to it, and also this disease makes you more susceptible to HIV. Um, so the best way to prevent having this disease is either abstinence or mutual monogamy, where both partners agree not to have sex with anyone else to prevent getting the disease, um, or if you are having sex with multiple partners, use condoms. Um, even if you are using condoms, sexually active women under the age of 25 are recommended to get tested yearly, just in case. Thankfully, this disease is easily treatable with antibiotics, um, but even the antibiotics don't, pre don't reverse the scarring that's occurred. So over a lifetime, if you keep getting this disease, you could have permanent scarring that could cause infertility. Um, and as giantmicrobes.com says, uh, this plush chlamydia can be used as a subtle reminder to get tested. So get tested, folks. Um, future outlook. Uh, there's no vaccine yet. They're trying to work on one. Um, 
but they also are trying to raise awareness and the CDC is also working on expedited partner therapy where they'll give someone enough antibiotics for themselves and for their partner. Um, the difficulty is that antibodies that the body produces do not prevent the persistent reinfection. Um, here are my references and thank you so much for watching.